Afternoon everyone. Just a uh, quick video to um, explain uh, the events that took place uh, two years ago today. Um, I'd been invited by a local school just around the corner from me. Um, I had been flying the balloon for about uh, three and a half months in the local area and um, the school had shown a keen interest on inviting the pilot, me, and the balloon uh, down to uh, the school for a demonstration. Now, I am very, very keen on uh, involving the young in ballooning because I believe that if there is no young encouraged to join ballooning, then ballooning will die away. So I jumped at the chance. And um, any good pilot studies the weather religiously, um, especially in ballooning. Um, and um, I picked out a, um, I was liaising with the teachers at the time, and we picked out a slot. And um, this particular slot um, was going to be, um, it was going to be um, fast, but doable. Um, and um, we came, the day arrived, and um, we pulled up onto the field, and um, we began inflating. And um, I did my checks on the burner first, um, let the kids have a good look around, um, even let the kids um, sit in the uh, stand in the basket and have their picture taken if they wanted to. Um, and then uh, we got the balloon out. I let them uh, have a good look at the balloon, um, what goes into building these things, um, and just basically a good uh, dissection of everything that a pilot has to do. Um, so we began inflating and um, we, um, we stood her up and one of the things that I asked for um, when I committed to this demonstration was I asked the teachers not to allow the kids to crowd round the top of the balloon or the crown line or get in the way of the crown line and um, at first it went well um, but then as I started to hot inflate, the rest of the school came out and crowded around the back. And um, by this time, I was um, thinking, oh boy, I'm going to have to launch now because I was fearful that if I pulled out, if I pulled the parachute out and the balloon came down, the balloon will come down on top of the kids and either injure them or because I can't take responsibility for um, the, I can't see what's going on behind the balloon when I'm down at the basket because the basket is my uh, priority. So anyway, um, I stood her up and um, that was the point when I asked uh, my passenger to jump in the basket with me. And um, when I saw that the um, kids had crowded round the back of the balloon, um, I was... I basically said to myself, it's, I made the crucial decision that it's more, it's probably more better to uh, launch than to um, pull the balloon down and um, possibly injure the kids. It was, an, it was a very unlikely situation. I'm sure the kids would not have grabbed the balloon um, when she came down, but you just can't be sure. So... I committed myself to launching. Um, we flew for about 40 minutes and um, we flew for a good um, we flew for a good uh, 10 miles in less than 40 minutes um, which is quite it's, it's fast. Um, but down on the ground the weather said that the particular at this particular time you were going to be launching, uh, the weather said it was going to be 8 gusting 13 and also it said it was going to be dying out the, uh, as the day progressed. So that is why I chose uh, that particular um, slot for the school demonstration. So um, I came down low over a um, over towards um, Sutton, not Sutton sorry. Um, I came down low over uh, Cottenham and uh, I spied this field, uh, set aside field, 
that I thought would be good. And uh, I briefed my passenger on everything even, uh, before we launched and um, whilst we we're in the air as well, just to double check that my passenger was aware of what we need, he needed to do. And um, I was just about to pull the parachute out um, to get us lower and put the pilot light out when uh, the basket hit the ground the basket catapulted forward and I was thrown out clear. Um, the next thing I realised was um, I'm not in the basket anymore and my balloon is carrying on without the pilot. Uh, so I, I turned round um, and I should probably mention that um, the top of the basket actually ran me over um, but I got no cuts or bruises. The only thing I suffered was a scratch on the back of my neck. I felt extremely lucky. Um, looking back on it, I feel lucky, should I say. Um, and then I realised that I wasn't in the basket anymore. So I uh, began running towards uh, the balloon, realising that my passenger is still inside the basket. And uh, the next thing I realised is I'm shouting at my passenger to grab the red line, which is the rip, which operates the uh, parachute at the top. He goes to grab it and he just falls out of the side. Now at this point, I am now thinking, oh my God, now my balloon is carrying carrying just the gas weight. No, no pass there's no passenger weight, there's no pilot weight, and there's no one on, con there's no one on board to, con to control where she's going to end up. And for that first three seconds, I thought, I said to myself, I wish my balloon had killed me because I didn't want to end up where she was going to end. Uh, I didn't know where she was going to end up and I didn't want to find out where she was going to end up because I thought she was going to end up in a school. She was going to hit pylons or worst case scenario, she was going to end up on a, on a busy main road and cause a massive pile up. Anyway, as it happened, uh, the balloon actually landed in, um, it, she landed in a business park, um, but she missed all the parked cars and she missed all the um, glass sided buildings and she landed between two trees and um, basically just um, sat uh, in, the, in the car park. Uh, she caused a bit of a stir, as this picture will show you here. Um, I actually got talking to the person who posted this on the day. Um, these are some of the photographs that uh, were took of us just before we started inflating. And that's during inflation. That's me checking on the parachute and also me checking on my driver at the time to um, make sure that everything was fine. That's me quite inflating, if you can see. And that's where the kids were all standing at the back of the balloon and the balloon is stood up. <clears throat> um, so the next thing I know is um, my passenger is um, on the ground screaming and uh, I realised that I have to get into um, sort of pilot mode. I have to um, designate myself to deal with the situation that I've been given. The first thing I did was I phoned uh, the emergency services. I phoned all three of them to come and um, assist me. As we'd landed in a field and the nearest road was three miles away, uh, the ambulance uh, didn't turn up, unfortunately. Um, my retrieve vehicle found us first. And luckily, uh, a lady on my, um, on my crew was uh, NHS trained, and she knew exactly how to deal with um, my passenger, um, because he described, he described these symptoms as um, pins and needles in his hands, and unable to move his shoulder. Now I instantly knew that that was either a dislocated shoulder or 
a broken broken arm and uh, so the next thing I know is we're elevating his injury in the car and uh, <clears throat> Jess tells me that um, it's a possible um, dislocated shoulder and broken collarbone and she was correct she was totally correct so the next thing I know is where um, I instruct my um, my balloon is gone I don't know where where she'll end up and um, I said my goodbyes I didn't think I'd see her again um, and uh, the next thing I know is um, I say to my uh, retrieve driver um, we must get to the hospital the nearest hospital which was Doddington and that was at least another 40 minutes away so um, we took him to Doddington um, the next thing I do when I um, when I've dropped hit dropped my passenger off um, or one thing I forgot to mention was um, my passenger didn't think I'd be able to lift him up with my arm but uh, we linked hands and we linked arms sorry and I pulled him up and uh, we walked for three miles to the nearest road um, he shut his eyes and said Rob guide the way um, I'm in so much pain that I can't I can't see so it it was my responsibility to walk my passenger uh, to the nearest road which we did as I said um, I was prepared to wait with my passenger at the doctors to make sure that he was seen my passenger was insistent that I leave him and go look for my balloon so reluctantly I, I agreed and I um, I phoned the emergency services uh, whilst also having to deal with some um, irate parents because they were uh, I remember phoning the fire brigade and I said to the fire brigade um, yes I reported a um, balloon a hot air balloon that had gone off on its own without any pilot on board or any control and I said um, can you confirm to me where the balloon has come to rest and he says yes I can and he gave me the address and um, this is what we found when we arrived um, we went hunting high and low through this car park and it she was bundled up in a corner with a pallet on top later found out that the um, employees of that office block um, had done that my basket had fallen behind a fence so I couldn't really retrieve it um, so what I did is I took the burner off and I took the tanks out and I handed to handed them to my parents over the top of the fence and we took them back in the car and I left my basket like that <clears throat> um, and just just to bring uh, just to bring this uh, little thing up to up to speed up to closure was um, the press were hunting for me and I chose not to speak to the press in fact I put my whole Facebook under lockdown I put um, I put my crew under lockdown as well I said to my crew not to uh, talk to anyone not to respond to any unknown numbers and just to wait a few days to see what happens as it happened uh, we went back about five days later to my basket to go and uh, retrieve it and um, the basket had gone and what had happened was the on-site gardeners had actually managed to lift the basket over the top of the fence and put it on a truck and take it back down to their headquarters uh, I later found out where that was and I managed to retrieve my basket which here it is two years later <clears throat> and um, it's it still runs raw with me and it, it will forever because it is not something you want to see as a pilot watching your aircraft or um, a hot air balloon just drifting off on her own um, without any 
idea of where she's going to end up, what damage she's going to cause, um, or who she might hurt, or indeed who she may actually kill. Um, but here I am, two, day, uh, two years later, still flying. Um, I don't have that balloon anymore, unfortunately. Um, she's now, as I've said before in some of my videos, uh, that I've um, sold her. I've still got one. And um, due to that, every balloon with um, turning vents now has to have um, a pilot harness, which is here. It is actually bolted to the floor, which I'll show you. It's bolted to the floor just there underneath the tank. Um, there's an actual uh, webbing strap uh, on the side of the basket there, if you can see. So, that's the story of um, when I got thrown out of my balloon. Now, I've made this video for two, uh, for three reasons. One, there's a few uh, things that have been said about this incident that are not true. Um, I did not, or the balloon was not being tethered at the time. Um, there's a lot of speculation that goes around um, the ballooning circle about what happened. Now you have it from the horse's mouth. And three, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to share this story with you um, for future reference in case it ever happens again. Hopefully it never will, uh, because as I said, we've now got pilot harnesses which are mandatory in hot air balloons. Um, this sort of thing does happen. Um, it doesn't happen very often, luckily, but um, I used to think that I'm the only one, and I'm not the only one. So I just wanted to uh, share the story um, for maybe future pilots to uh, learn from and reflect on, and also uh, to uh, just, we say that we don't talk about things that affect us and this always uh, this will always affect me look i'm shaking now um when i come in when i see when i see the ground coming up to me quite fast i have flashbacks of what happened but i'm i'm starting to get over it i'm finally starting to get over it because i have the reassurance that i will not be thrown out again with this so I'd just like to uh, thank you for listening to my video and my testimony of what happened. Um, there was a few also false reports that say that I was uh, flying from Doddington and that the balloon crashed in Doddington. That is not true. The balloon took off from Chatteris and uh, I tried to land um, near Cottenham. So that is the story. And I hope that it will help with a uh, future reference for people. And uh, yeah, I will continue my safe flying. I've now got 132 uh, hours behind me in a two year period. Um, in fact, it was uh, three years yesterday uh, that I checked out with my balloon uh, and got my license uh, on the 21st of December 2016. So call it two and a half years. So uh, to wrap that up, uh, no, sorry, call it three and a half years. Beg your pardon. <laughs> so I will now wrap this up. And um, as I said, um, I hope it helps other pilots in the future um, to uh, deal with what they've ever had to go through, uh, the way that I've had to go through it. Um, and I just hope that it will help someone because um, I am up for helping people and for improving safety in the sport. So thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. See you.